An American cowboy taking on the federal government, Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy, threatening to launch a range war after the government sent snipers and helicopters to seize his cattle. And now, what started as a land battle is a giant standoff. On one side, armed officers sent by the feds to surround Bundy's ranch. And on the other side, growing crowds supporting the rancher and the confrontation now getting violent. At one point, rangers shooting Bundy's son, Amon, with a stun gun. So what is this fight about? Rancher Cliven Bundy and his son Amon join us. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. We're All right, Cliven, happy to be Cliven. here with you tonight. Good. Cliven, what's, what's going on? Tell me the problem. <laughs> well, I guess it's a rage war. That's all I can say. <laughs> why, well, a, why, why are there mess, helicopters and a... snipers? Well, I had asked that question, too. I think we're in America, but maybe not. It seemed like the United States government is uh, operating with unlimited power over we the people of the state of Nevada. Amon, this started back in 1993, as I understand. That's when this sort of this battle, and now we're in 2014. What was it that provoked the beginning of this dispute with the federal government, Amon? Go ahead. Go ahead. It was, um, go ahead, Dan. It's uh, administrative regulatory uh, abuse. In other words, they, the, the bureaus kept a cutting our cattle, uh, causing us so much trouble we couldn't ranch. And then they brought the desert tortoise in as a, a surrogate species and started to create what they call a full force and, a full force and effect decisions, which basically took uh, 52 of my neighbor ranchers out. So, Clyburn, where's, uh, where's this headed? Well, it's it's a uh, it's not about cattle. It's about uh, federal government abuse on state rights and state sovereignty, state law, uh, public land access, and the worst part of it all that's about the seizure of the sheriff's sheriff's policing power. Cliven, as I looked at a court order, there's a court order that says that the federal government can do this. So what's your response to that? Uh, my response is the wrong court. I've never had my due process in a Nevada state court, a court of competent jurisdiction. So, so tell me, as hey, you look uh, around. <clears throat> Go ahead, Amon. Uh, I like my dad's uh, little story he used to explain the situation. If, uh, if someone came in, busted into my house, and abused my children, and so and uh, I call the cops, they don't respond, and then I take him to court, I show up at the courtroom, look on the stand, and it's the very person that abused my children looking down at me in a, in a black robe. How, how in the world is, are we going to get justice in, in that court? So uh, tell me, uh, Cliven, um, as you look around, how many people are there uh, supporting you? Can, can you get a number or sort of an idea? Well, I don't know for sure. I know that uh, most of the protesters here right now have uh, moved about 30 miles south on, uh, on the west side of Lake Mead, where the, the cattle are being gathered right now. I'm not there, so I don't know how many's protesting, but I'm, I'm guessing there are at least 100 people uh, in the area. The pro there are pro protesters. There's about uh, 200 armed uh, guards, uh, and they're not at present here either. But they are in, over by the Overton uh, Beach, Amen, why which were is you, on the uh, west why, side why, of Lake Mead. Amen, why were you tasered? What what was the what surrounded that incident? Well, right here where we were protesting, we we could see coming out of the mountains, uh, 14 uh, vehicles, uh, federal vehicles. And uh, they were, uh, one of those vehicles was a uh, backhoe, and it was hauling a dump, uh, or excuse me, it was a dump truck hauling a backhoe. And uh, it was being escorted by the 13 other uh, vehicles with, with armed, uh, uh, I don't know, if military personnel, BLM, but they had full weapons. Uh, there was two to each vehicle, and they had, uh, they had uh, dogs as well. And uh, we know that they've been running this cattle around with these helicopters 
and running and, and understanding this country and how hot it is in the cattle, we, we were afraid, we are afraid that they're running uh, these cattle to death. Also, they're separating these calves from their mothers. So we we're afraid that the, and that the mothers are, or the calves are dying as well. So we believe, we believe that it was a, a rendering truck uh, and we were we were going to find out, and so well, we stopped the convoy. We stopped the convoy, and and we found out. Gentlemen, um, obviously this is not going to end very soon. I can tell by that. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, of course uh, this Monday night, Sean Hannity will give you an exclusive uh, look behind the scenes at the ranch and the standoff. That's Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Hannity. Be sure to tune in for that. Now to a threat from a Democratic congressional candidate. As we've told you, Virginia Democrat Mike Dickinson tweeting, if elected, I promise war on the Tea Party, Fox News, NRA, and other trash. And Mike Dickinson joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Good to see you, too. Okay, why do you hate me? Well, I, I have a problem with all of Fox News. Well, but no, what about me? You got a war, I mean, I'm Fox News. Why do you mean I'm trash, apparently? So what's the problem with me? I don't have a problem with you personally. I have a problem with the company you work for. <laughs> I think that I think that the facts are misrepresented. See, Every day is an attack on Obama. Do we misrepresent? Do we misrepresent here and on the record? I can't say personally that you do. Okay, we don't watch that much. Well, I'm, I don't watch much. I can say the like the previous story with those with those two cowboys. You know, you have that story, and that's a good story. But it should be prefaced by the fact that they are they're breaking the law, did, and that's did why you they not, got Did tased. you not hear me say the court order that I read? You shouldn't like that, that guy. He he's no. Did you hero. not? Hear, did you hear me say that? <laughs> I did hear you say okay, that. Okay. <laughs> did you want me to say it twice or three times? Yes, but okay. then you still put them on, and and that in, in my mind that's you know kind of grand. It's, it's encouraging people to fight the police and fight the government, and like it's some you know. It doesn't federal he, government situation. Wait a second. Let's go back to this war on Fox News. Yes. Well. All right. Tell me exactly what your problem is with me. My problem with you is that you have guests like the previous, like the previous story, and it, it encourages people to fight the government, like Obama and the and the good federal government is this big bad authority that they're coming to take your land, they're coming to take your I house, they're coming to take your I, cattle. I don't get you. Must have a potato in your ear because <laughs> I said the court order. Like I don't get it. Like, you did, I mean, you did. But there's some people out there that watch your show what? and that watch Fox News. You that think they have potatoes you know, in their ear? They didn't hear that part. Yes. They didn't hear that part. Yes. So, I so the problem is not is not so much what I do, but that the viewers have potatoes in their ears. Yes. Okay. I, I all right. Well, now we got that story. All right. Now the Tea Party. Um, yes. Any any Tea Party arrested in your jurisdiction? In Tea Party. Yeah. Arrest. Uh, yeah. Any arrest? They, there is a strong like Tea Party movement in, in the. Uh, any the anyone arrested? Not that I know of. You don't think it's the First Amendment, do you? The Tea Party? No, I love the First Amendment. Well, then why can't they have their position? I think that they can have their their position, but I think that they misrepresent their position. It's not we the they people. Have, they got potatoes in their ears. The, the Tea Party <laughs> is not the we the people, flag flying, eagle soaring. It's not the movement that, that the, they portray. Their movement is the me movement. It's not we the people. It's me the people. Okay, so you they think They want you think rights that apply to them, but they don't want to give those rights to anybody else. Oh, <laughs> and But yeah, you don't want them to have the rights either. I think they have you don't a right want to them... speak. I think they have a right to speak. Well, you want to have a war on them, for God's sakes. I mean, you say you want a war on them, you don't I want do. to hear what they have to say. I think that they, they need a war on them because of the fact of how they portray themselves. They, they, they portray this image that's totally not who they are. It's totally not who they are. Okay, that's really bad to portray yourself not as who you are, right? Exactly. Okay, terrible. All right, let's go to this. Uh, speaking of that, a letter to the Times Dispatch you wrote January 29, 2013, and you claimed <clears throat> that you were the CEO of Mid Atlantic Show Clubs, which is a group of strip clubs and stuff, right? That's, that's correct. Okay, that wasn't true, was it? I worked for, I, I consulted for them, I did. Okay, it says CEO of Mid-Atlantic. Were you the CEO? I was, the, uh, I guess, consulting operations so director. So that wasn't quite true, was it? It was wrong. <laughs> it was a lie. A little bit of a lie, right? Tiny one? That's a little true. bit of a lie? Yes. Okay. All right, you speak, you like transparency. I went to your website, your campaign website, yes. and uh, you, it talks about who you are. It says, about meet Mike, okay? Meet Mike, and do you know what? You didn't put in here um, about how you uh, were lobbyist uh, for strip clubs and you learned from Larry Flint not to sugarcoat but to tell it like it is. But you didn't tell it like it is here, right? If somebody asked me, I'll tell them how Larry Flint said that, that was, to me. But that was not, you didn't exactly meet Mike. We don't really learn about Mike here, do we? We learn about Mike on Twitter every okay. day. Well, Twitter, there's another <laughs> thing. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm asking you, I think you said, the thing you don't like about is it is the loop of partisan bickering. Yes. I'm curious what you think when you sort of tweet about people will be like, you just go out there and you tweet, like you have a war on Fox News, you don't, including me, I guess, that you have a war on the free speech of the Tea Party. As, you don't like that stuff, do you? I don't care for the Tea Party. Okay, but you, but you don't like, it says on your meet mic that you don't like this pick, par, partisan bickering. My, my deal with the partisan like bickering is that I think all political parties are, are, are fake somewhat. Instead of somebody... But, you, but, but, somebody but it says smart. you don't like it, but you right. do it. 
Well, I why? don't partisan bicker. I just say. Well, you I don't. Think. Well, then let's go to your Twitter account. You want to go to your Twitter account? I just say, your Twitter account's been opinion. suspended, right? No, it's been active, reactivated. Okay, but it Somebody was it was suspended. That right? I was being mean on Twitter. So all these would people. Would that be would that be that partisan bickering you don't like in the meet, Mike? No, man, no. You don't think so? <laughs> no. You say, so you don't think that the thing that you said in Meet Mike, that if you don't like to, partisan bickering, and then your Twitter account gets shut down, yours for partisan bickering, for you don't have a problem mean. with it. They, somebody said I was being mean on Twitter, and I was just sitting there expressing my opinion. My deal with all politicians is politicians could, should say who they are, and they should say well, what I, they really well, okay. believe in. Then, then we go back to Meet Mike. You don't mention any place in this little paragraph of Meet Mike on your website about, your, about working for Larry Flint and you know, writing stuff for him, and you don't write about that. Um, at all, do you? you? don't write about the strip clubs. You don't write that you lied when you wrote to the newspaper and bragged you were the CEO of a strip club organization that you're not. I also didn't put all the stuff I put on Twitter on there either. You want to take back your war on Fox? No. You don't? <laughs> no. Why are you running? I'm running for office because I think we need politicians who say what they think and who don't hold back. You should not sugarcoat. You should not. You should not lie. You should not. You how should not just you say, can't say you, you lied to the newspaper. How can you say that? How can you possibly say that to me? I mean, I think that I think these politicians should just be honest about what they think. Well, and who they gets are. I mean, like, why did you lie to the newspaper? I mean, like, when I, when I, there's a lot of politicians out there at war with Fox, but how many other ones have come out and said it? Would you agree with me on that? Oh, you know, Mike, it's going to be a long election. I, I hope you come back. Will you come back? I'll come back anytime you like. <laughs> All right. All right, you're a piece of work. Uh, anyway, Mike, thank you. Good luck thank in you your campaign. Much.